I want to start with a question. What is the most widely used construction material in the world? I'll give you a hint. It's manufacturing releases more CO2 emissions than flying. Any guesses? I'm talking about concrete. Every year we use more than 25 billion tons of concrete in the world. It's everywhere. And while concrete has helped us shape our world, its production comes at a very high cost. Concrete production has an enormous carbon footprint. It releases more than 8% of the total global anthropogenic emissions of CO2. Concrete is made by mixing water, cement, aggregates like sand or crushed rocks, and cement. Cement is the primary ingredient in concrete. It is like a glue that holds every other ingredient together. Cement manufacturing is responsible for most of the CO2 emissions in concrete production. Given the current trends in population growth and urbanization, it is likely that we're going to continue using a whole lot more of these materials. So what are the alternatives? How can we create a more sustainable version of cement? Well, my name is Eric Espinosa Ortiz, and I'm gonna talk to you about how we can potentially use microbes like fungi and bacteria to create materials that can potentially substitute for cement. We can do this through a process known as biomineralization, which is the biological synthesis of materials by microbes. And biomineralization is a very common process in nature. We can find biominerals like calcium carbonate everywhere, in environments like coral reefs, limestone caves, and even on the shells of soft-bodied organisms. Biominerals can be produced by different microbial metabolic processes under favorable conditions and with the presence of a specific chemical species. Microbes can either directly control mineral precipitation or they can modify the chemistry of their surrounding environment and create the necessary conditions for minerals to precipitate. Calcium carbonate biomineralization is a phenomenon that has been widely studied, and it has attracted a lot of attention for its potential use in engineering applications. In fact, biocementation or microbial-induced calcium carbonate precipitation has been used in applications like soil stabilization and metal bioremediation. There are many different metabolic uh, or metabolisms that can be used to precipitate calcium carbonate minerals. However, in engineering applications, the use of urolytic microbes is the most common method. Urolytic microbes have the ability to produce an enzyme, urease, that can catalyze the hydrolysis of urea. Urea is a common molecule found in nature by protein metabolism. So through a series of different chemical reactions, the breakdown of urea results in the production of carbonate and um, ammonium ions, along with an increase in the pH of the solution. At this point, we can potentially promote mineral precipitation, but we need to add a source of calcium ions. So under an alkaline environment, and in the presence of high enough concentrations of calcium and carbonate ions, we can precipitate calcium carbonate minerals. As a result of this process, we end up with materials known as biorocks. These are agglomerates of calcium carbonate minerals that are coated by organic compounds produced by microbes. We can use this process, for instance, to create something that is known as biobricks. We can use urolytic bacteria. The urolytic bacterium, Sporocercina pasteuri, is a workhorse organism for biocementation. This bacterium is known for its ability to produce urease at very high rates. It's very active. It can grow under alkaline conditions, and it can tolerate high concentrations of calcium. How do we create biobricks? Well, typically we place sand particles into a mold, and then we add a suspension that contains these microbial cells along with nutrients and a mineralizing solution containing calcium, ions, and urea. As a result, we obtain calcium carbonate precipitates. And guess what? These precipitates act like cement, right? Holding all the sand particles together. After drying and curating, 
we end up with robust building blocks. These materials have been widely characterized. Some of them actually have similar properties to those bricks prepared using traditional methods. There is a lot of research done to improve these materials. We're looking into different microbial strains, different culturing conditions, etc. A common way to, pro uh, to produce these biomaterials is by using a column reactor in which we pack some particles in there, and then we periodically add a microbial suspension as well as a mineralizing solution. And then we have a biomineralized column. This process is so promising that there is already a company in Denmark that has available commercial products that are similarly produced using these biomineralization processes. They're already selling bio-based tiles. Another common application of biocementation biolytic bacteria is for self-healing in concrete. Concrete has low tensile strength, it is quite brittle, and it is very prone to cracking. So we can introduce bacteria to promote the mineralization of these calcium carbonate uh, minerals to seal these cracks. Bacteria can be encapsulated or they can be sprayed directly onto the cracks. And then over time, as the minerals form, they fill in those gaps, so healing these materials. A lot of research on biocementation biolytic microbes has been done using bacteria. But in the last decade, filamentous fungi have emerged as ideal candidates for these applications. Fungi have the ability to survive to very harsh conditions, right? So this could be relevant for cement. They also have the ability to produce a whole lot more biomass compared to bacteria. And so they could potentially provide more nucleation sites for minerals to precipitate. They can also form very long, complicated networks with their hyphae, the filament or fiber-like structures of fungi. And this could potentially also strengthen our materials. And of course, fungi have shown the ability to also produce urease so they can induce calcium carbonate precipitation. Now, this is a very novel area of research. There's not that many studies that have looked into this. So we are still trying to understand the mechanisms that these microbes use, different culturing conditions, how can we improve this um, process, etc. There are only a handful of pioneering studies that have actually used filamentous fungi for biocementation of sand particles. One of these studies was actually successful at not only precipitating calcium carbonate minerals, but also they observed that the presence of these filaments can actually improve the strength of these materials. So with this, I want to summarize, highlighting that we can potentially use biocementation using urolithic microbes to create materials that can substitute for cement. Of course, there is still a lot that needs to be investigated. There are many challenges with these technologies and a lot of unanswered questions. But this makes this field of research very interesting and very hot. Thank you all so much for your attention.